I'll tell you right now, you know, uh, the past few videos that we've made, we've really been trying to line things up and show people how close we are to a pre-tribulation rapture. And I think today's video will be the same. It's just continuously growing in that direction of, of, of time is, is ticking down. You know, the clock is ticking down to midnight. Um, this morning, uh, I, I got a text from uh, Brother Josh Brannigan, uh, who uh, texted me and he says, man, you got to check this out. And, and, he, and he says, go to the U.S. National Debt Clock dot org. And he says, up in the upper right hand corner, OK, um, there is a, a, a little box all right, and it says open and close secret window. All right, so he says click secret window, and then you have this picture that pops up. I'm going to show it to you now. It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, at the top here, there's a constellation. That constellation is known as Leo the Lion, okay? And you have another constellation down here below that's known as Virgo, the Virgin, all right? Now, you have three planets that are beneath Leo that account for 12 different stars above Virgo's head. It says in Revelation chapter, chapter 12 that there is a woman that's clothed with the crown that's clothed with the sun and the moon at her feet and a crown of 12 stars is upon her head all right you notice the sun is right next to virgo's arm here all right in the middle of the picture and then at the bottom uh over to the left you see the moon at her feet all right if you notice the planet jupiter being very small kind of in the chest area of virgo looks like as if it's going to pass through the womb and between the legs of virgo as if virgo is giving birth to jupiter now i do believe jupiter represents represents the Antichrist, okay? And let me tell you something, all right? If you watch that movie, Jupiter Ascending, you will get that picture. It's made by the Wachowski brothers who also made the, the, the Matrix trilogy, all right? Well, um, there's a new Matrix movie as well, but uh, they're definitely telling you that Jupiter is representative of the Antichrist. I do not believe that this is the actual Revelation 12 sign Okay, I believe that this is the occult revelation, or that the, this is the occult sign of the coming of the Antichrist. In the in the middle of it, you'll see a Jesus fish, and in the center of it, it says I X O Y E, and in Greek that means Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Okay, now this is not our Messiah that 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 we worship, Jesus that's in heaven right now that's coming to get us in a pre-tribulation rapture. This is their false Christ that's already on the earth, all right? If you notice behind the Jesus fish and behind the glow of the Jesus fish, there's some lines going up almost in a triangle formation. And, and, and that is an upside down triangle basically from the tip of the glow that's below the Jesus fish all the way up to the top of the image that, that goes out from thy kingdom come, okay? So also you're gonna also see imagery here as as above so below thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven all right so here's the thing this is a very occult image all right they're portraying their false messiah and it makes you wonder why would they put that on the u.s debt clock well then you have to go and look and see who owns the u.s debt clock all right and it's, there's, a, there's a company that runs it called the Durst Organization. And the Durst family is one of the richest families in New York, all right? And, and they're very, very tightly connected with the Kushners. They wouldn't want you to know that, but, but I'm telling you right now they are. I'm looking right now at the LinkedIn for Carrie Kushner, K-E-R-I Kushner, K-U-S-H-N-E-R, Carrie Kushner. She's the assistant property manager of the One World Trade Center. She works for the Durst organization, so we have a Kushner and a Durst connection there, all right? But her one of her family members, Jared Kushner, has been doing a lot of moving and shaking in the Middle East and in, and in Africa and things like that, all right? He is help I believe these people are preparing a way for their false messiah if you go and you start looking at uh, um, the occult writings that are written out about the the, the uh, approaching time of the emergence of this coming messiah known as the, the what they refer to as the day of declaration it's very clear what they're portraying here in this imagery they are sounding their 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 call out to their people that very soon the Christ uh, the false Christ will emerge 
All right, now uh, within their writings uh, in a company known as Share International that was established by a man named Benjamin Krem who claimed to be a medium for a spirit or a, a, a ascended master known as a, a Maitreya. All right, that this uh, being Maitreya is claiming to be this uh, a false Christ that will arise and that will take over uh, the leadership of all these world religions, merging them all together. Uh, Helena Blavatsky, who who ran the House of Theosophy, who was friends with Aleister Crowley, all these people say the exact same thing. Maitreya, Maitreya, Maitreya. The New Age religion, folks, is going to have a worldwide leader, a charismatic political and religious leader that they call Lord Maitreya. At least so far, that's who they call him, or that's what they call him. This individual, as far as I know, has not made his public appearance yet, but the New Agers claim that he is on the earth at the present time. They claim that he came to live with the Asian community in East London, England, in July 1977 by descending from his ancient retreat in the Himalaya Mountains along the border of India and Tibet. They further believe that his imminent emergence into full public view is assured. They also claim that this individual is the one that the Christians call Christ, the Jews call the Messiah, the Buddhists call the Fifth Buddha, the Hindus call Krishna, and the Muslims call the Imam Mahdi. In other words, all of the major religions of the world are awaiting the arrival of this one individual. And they say that he is on the earth now, patiently waiting for the appointed time to reveal his existence to the peoples of the world. They say that he will apparently assume the leadership of all of these religions, and when he does, he will create a one-world religion. The New Agers have written that in the esoteric tradition, previously defined as being intended for or understood by only a choose chosen few as an inner group of disciples or initiates, in other words, the esoteric means hidden. They claim that the word Christ is not the name of an individual, but the name of an office or function within the spiritual hierarchy of masters. They claim that the masters are a group of perfected men who have guided human evolution from behind the scenes for centuries, and they believe that this Lord Maitreya is that Christ. Now, Manly P. Hall has written of this individual by identifying him as, quote, the way, the truth, and the life, which coming to every life redeems all who accept it, unquote. Since Jiddu Krishnamurti, featured in Zeitgeist Addendum, failed as the world teacher responsible for ushering in the age of Aquarius one world system, theosophists, freemasons, and occultists have been waiting for their world teacher since then. Well on January 9th, 1959, a student of Alice Bailey and Blavatsky, who was already familiar with the doctrine of the ascended masters, Benjamin Krem, would come into contact with powerful forces who would appoint him to introduce Maitreya, the world teacher, to humanity. Krem's first experience is as follows. On January 3, 1959, Krem became possessed by an energy and a message from an outside force said to him, go to Blackfair's Bridge, south side, Blackheath side, on January 9th, 9.30 p.m. So on January 9th, 1959, Benjamin Krem followed these instructions and crossed Blackfair's Bridge in London, walking to the south side. There was no one about. It was deserted. There was a car waiting at the far end of the bridge. He walked beside the car and looked inside of it. There were some people in it who he did not know, but one of them was a man who told him he had been receiving messages from the Ascended Masters. From there, Krem started receiving messages again from this force who he now believed were these ascended masters that Theosophy invented. This entity told Krem to pull out his tape recorder. It began giving Krem long dictations which he repeated into the tape recorder. The entity said, now our master Maitreya himself has something important to tell you. Krem then claimed to be overshadowed by Maitreya, this leader of the ascended masters. In a sense, he was possessed by Maitreya. Krem claims that the experience was that of total identification with everything and everybody in the world, a kind of universal experience such as he had never felt. 
He was filled with a foreign tremendous energy. Krem claimed to have seen a vision of himself in the future, as well as Maitreya, the world teacher, who ushers in the age of Aquarius, one world system. Later he was instructed that he would help introduce Maitreya to the world. Since then, Krem started an organization called Share International. They have a website as well. It is aimed at promoting Maitreya and the teachings of Theosophy and the New Age. Krem admitted that he was influenced by Helena Blavatsky and Alice Bailey, quote, To many today, this awareness includes the recognition of higher states of consciousness attained by those who make up the emerging spiritual kingdom, the masters and initiates of the world. Their existence was first revealed in modern time by H.P. Blavatsky, co-founder of the Theosophical Society, as long ago as 1875. A more detailed communication about the Masters and their work was given by Alice A. Bailey between 1919 and 1949. In her book The Externalization of the Hierarchy, she revealed the existence of a planned return to physical plane work and activity by this group of enlightened men which return, I submit, has already begun. I think that what Blavatsky wrote down, even by her own admission, was not written by uh, an ascended master, and I don't think that ascended masters exist. She was being deceived, regardless of what we think. We have to, we have to at least believe her and the others involved in the high levels of the Theosophic movement, that what they got, the core levels, their secret doctrine, was given to them by off-world entities. The, the research becomes, who are these off-world entities? And this is the other part of that research. Is what those entities said true or not? I understand that it's very poetic. It's very easy and seductive to uh, believe because when you read some of her stuff or some of the other stuff that's written directly from demonic entities, it's extremely seductive. We must understand that these beings are thousands of years older than us and they're very smart. We're no match for them. The most, the smartest of us are no match for the intellect of them, but their des desire is to deceive us. So we are outmatched in this regard. So that's why it's seductive when we read it. Um, the most current thing that they're doing right now has been since last December, this supposed uh, star sign, which is really, again, they just try to knock off from the Bible as much as they possibly can. This is like a knockoff of the star of uh, Bethlehem in the Bible. And in that, they're saying that there's going to be these, what they call star-like luminaries in the sky. Four of them, that are in different quadrants of the earth. Um, they're five times the size of a football field, according to them. And people are seeing these things, and they've got a whole, up on shareinternational.org, they've got a whole um, section devoted to this, where people are sending in pictures, there's stars, and, and what they are, spaceships. And that's what they're, that's what they're uh, admitting to at this point. And more and more people are seeing them, but evidently this is going to be the thing that really, really heralds in Maitreya up until they have the day of declaration when he makes his public emergence. And this is supposed to be on the uh, major media? <laughs> yes, yes. When he makes his uh, big debut, uh, what they've said is they've already secured an interview with a major uh, US TV network and then one in Japan I believe as well. Uh, so during this time he's going to, uh, the day of declaration, Supposedly, he's going to basically telepathically communicate with masses and masses of people. They supposedly will hear them in their own language. They'll be able to comprehend him. Supposedly, they'll feel this infinite love. Uh, and um, there will be many also supposed miraculous healings taking place around the world at the same time. And most likely, this day of declaration will come on the heels of some or multiple cataclysmic events, most likely the first thing being an economic meltdown, which is what he's predicted by, way back from the 90s. Right. And what does Maitreya uh, promise? What does he want to achieve? What are his goals? Well, you know, if you look at the word Share International, which is the name of the site, you know, he, if you, if you read what he says, um, he wants the world resource sharing of the world. He doesn't want there to be any, uh, supposedly, any uh, any qualities of the world, uh, you know. You look at what he says that he is. He says that he is the Christ that the Christians are expecting, uh, the Messiah the Jews are expecting, the fifth Buddha, the Buddhas are uh, the Buddhists are expecting, uh, Krishna the Hindus are expecting, and Imam Mahdi that the Muslims. 
So he's kind of everything rolled up into one. He's, he's, he's like the total package. He's going to give and be able to unite and put all of the various and different religious systems, the major religious systems, all on the same page. And the Bible says that when the Antichrist comes, he's going to come with all lying power, signs, and wonders. And he's going to deceive the, deceive the whole world by which the miracles that he's going to do. So he's taking credit for every single miracle that's going on right now, whether it's a Marian apparition, whether, which would be, to him, the Ascended Master Mary, because he's got a whole band of masters that he's going to be coming with. And so he's, he's taking credit for everything. Every miracle that you're seeing going on in the world right now, whether it's a Catholic miracle, whether it's some type of energizing of water, whether it's some bleeding statue, whether it's, you know, some Hindu miracle, crosses of light, they've seen those in different and various churches. He's taking credit for all of that. And I think what we're going to see and what, what he says we're going to see in fact, I just read this in their last report. Benjamin Kremitz said also with the UFO sightings, he says they're going to increase up until the time when he makes his emergence. And he is going to be, he's going to come on the scene. He's going to be able to explain all of this and try to put everything, everybody on the same page. My personal belief is that the Antichrist or the world teacher will um, seem to actually be Christ in the sense that he will seem to destroy uh, some old system and some old bad leader and I think that it will somehow be tied to um, I don't know I, I this is my guess but it will somehow be tied to some sort of fake or uh, alien invasion or presence of some sort I don't know if Maitreya fits all those um, those characteristics but uh, I wouldn't doubt it for one minute if, if he was my personal opinion is that uh, Krim is somebody who ha is being talked to by entities and is doing what he's told to be doing. But you have to understand a lot of times with people that are channeling entities like that, they, they oftentimes do, do and say things that don't come true because the demons themselves don't know when. They're still on a timeline that they can't, they can't tell when something's going to happen. So they're always keeping something ready to happen in case when they finally can. So in the case of uh, of that, like if you look at the Blossom Goodchild thing and these ideas that were consistently put out by channel entities and things, uh, it never came to pass because they don't have control over the timeline. They just have to always be ready. According to Share International and the Swahili edition of the Kenya Times, Maitreya made an appearance June 11, 1988 to a local congregation in Nairobi, Kenya. The editor of the Swahili edition of the Kenya Times, a veteran journalist named Job Matungi witnessed the event and took some pictures. A summary of his article as it appeared in his newspaper is as follows, quote, The tall figure of a barefooted, white-robed, and bearded man appeared from nowhere and stood in the middle of the crowd. He was walking slowly towards the new church building, away from the tent. Mary walked with him side by side. I stared at the stranger without blinking, wafted on top of his turbaned head, his feet, and his entire body. In clear Swahili, which had no traces of accent, the strange man announced that the people of Kenya were blessed, especially those who had gathered at the venue that afternoon. We are nearing the time of the reign of heaven, but before that I shall come back and bring a bucket full of blessings for all of you, the man said. A bucket full of blessings is a reference to the astrological symbol for the age of Aquarius. Aquarius is depicted as a man carrying a pitcher of water in the zodiac, but continuing with the article, quote, It took the crowd nearly 20 minutes to recover after the man left the meeting in a car belonging to a Mr. Gurnam Singh, who offered to give him a lift. But it will probably take Mr. Singh his lifetime to recover from the shock he got two minutes later. On reaching the bus terminus, the man informed Mr. Singh to stop the car. On getting out, he walked a few paces beside the road and simply vanished into thin air. New Age expert and attorney Constance Cumby, author of The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow, had stumbled onto this Maitreya figure in her research in the 80s. Her book, published in 1983, was the first book to give a full expose on Maitreya and Benjamin Krem. On page 21, she notes a Denver Post interview conducted by Jack Kisling speaking to Benjamin Krem, quote, won't the advent of a single world religion annoy the hierarchies of all the current orthodox religions, I asked? More than that, he said with a smile. They will be shocked, I dare say, 
they will be among the last to accept the Christ. But according to Kisling, Krem said confidently, It will come, because it must. We will begin to live, he said, as potential gods." Unquote. Constance Cumby also notes that Krim is a Luciferian by citing a WLAC radio interview, quote, In a November 9, 1982 radio interview over WLAC, Nashville, Benjamin Krim told the entire Bible Belt that Lucifer came to planet Earth from planet Venus 18 and a half million years ago and made the supreme sacrifice for us, unquote. Constance Cumby had direct contact with Benjamin Krem face to face in Detroit, Michigan. I had the opportunity to meet this brave woman and she showed me the place in which she had attended a lecture by Benjamin Krem. a packed crowd, November 4th, 1981, and Bread for the World was out there, had tables, Oxfam, every group you could think of was sitting out there. They were passing out brochures. The brochure is reproduced in both of my books. Benjamin Krem came in. He opened, he gave some kind of a hand signal that looked something like that. And I thought at first he was waving to somebody, but the crowd appeared to flip into a trance. And then he started speaking and he was rotating his head. I can't even come close to It was as close to a 180 degree spin of a head as I've ever seen. How his head didn't snap off, I'll never know. And then he started talking and laying out what they were doing. And the crowd was thoroughly under several degrees of hypnosis. I knew many people in that crowd the, from political circles and social circles in Detroit for many years. And I talked to some of them. And the common denominator was they had all been through one kind of mind control course or another, one type of new age class or another. I talked to a fellow behind me, Al Banks, and I said he was a film producer doing much of what you're doing now. And I said, Al, I know what I'm doing here tonight. What are you doing here? And he said, because, Connie, he said, I'm taking a course in miracles at Unity. He said, I've joined Unity. We're all required to take a spiritual growth class. I've taken a course in miracles. It was a class requirement that we be here tonight. And then he said, you know, Connie, I would have thought a progressive person like you would have joined Unity a long time ago. Well, then I started explaining to him exactly why I haven't. And he, like, snapped, the glaze snapped off his eyes for a little bit. He thanked me for telling him. And then Krem came in and started doing his thing. And at the end of the evening, they had been promised a, uh, an appearance by Maitreya, the Christ channeled through Benjamin Krem himself, that Maitreya would speak through Benjamin Krem. And Benjamin Krem asked everybody to join in the recitation of the Great Invocation. I told the woman standing next to me, I will not say the Great Invocation with you. I will say my own prayer. And she was a nice little prim, proper looking black lady. Could have been active in any black Baptist church in Detroit from her appearance. And she said, no, that's all right, honey. We all have our own paths to God. And I said, the reason I will not say the great invocation with you, the scriptures clearly said that the Antichrist would come denying that Jesus was the Christ. I said, Benjamin Krem has denied it all evening and said Jesus was not the Christ and this Maitreya was. And the woman said what Benjamin Krem had said. She said, there's been many Christs. I said, there's been one and his name is Jesus. And people turned from rows around and looked at me like I was crazy. And, and so then Benjamin Krem came in and he started the hundred and nearly close to 180 degree spin of his neck again. And the crowd, crowd's hypnotic trance appeared to deepen. And he started out from the point of light within the mind of God, may light spring forth ever. And I went nice and clear, and I'll tell you, the acoustics in that building are wonderful. I said, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And I did that each and every stanza. And they got down to the last part, said, May light and love and power fulfill the plan on earth, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. And I said, nice and loud and clear, I said, May Jesus Christ return to earth and end the evil present in this room tonight. Well, the funniest thing happened, or may I say, it did not happen. Benjamin Krem stood there. He waited, he waited, and he waited. He clearly was watching for something to come over him. And it didn't happen. And he finally said to the crowd, he said, that will be all. You are dismissed. And, of course, everybody was extremely disappointed. And we went to the door and I went walking out. I had brought some co-spies with me. They were kind of chickening out at that point and waiting for me. They were afraid of being ripped limb to limb. And I stood down there and a number of those people knew me and they were just furious with me. And I stood there calm, cool, and collected. And I said, well, I said, if you're Maitreya the Christ, Betreya the Christ, or whatever his name's supposed to be, for everything he's cracked up to be, one lousy Christian in there saying the Lord's Prayer shouldn't have stopped him. And Benjamin Krem has never come back to Detroit although that was probably the most successful night financially and crowd-wise that he'd had in the United States. The following is a video taken in Iraq at a Shia Muslim festival. Share International and Benjamin Krem have put out that this is indeed an appearance of Maitreya, the supposed world teacher for the Age of Aquarius One World Government. Commenting on this video, Share International reports, quote, Imam Mahdi, unexpected appearance, proclaims the title of a video posted on YouTube. A miraculous figure of glowing brilliant white light appeared on a video filmed in Karbala, Iraq, on the night of Ashura, 6 January 2008. This Shia Muslim ceremony commemorates the martyrdom of the grandson of the Prophet Hussein, whose tomb is in Karbala. Benjamin Krem's master confirms that the light figure is Maitreya, Imam Mahdi to the Muslims, and that his dance-like movements with a sword remind us of his coming with the sword of cleavage. Could this be real, or is it a hoax? Is Maitreya real, or is he a hoax? Whatever the case may be, it turns out that it is not only New Agers and occultists who believe in this Maitreya, but politicians, presidents, and elitists also follow Maitreya. Wayne Peterson, a retired American diplomat, and admitted supporter of Maitreya with connections to the Pentagon and the United Nations stated the following about Mikhail Gorbachev in the White House in a Vision magazine interview June 20, 2000. Reporter Kendall Klug asks, I believe Mikhail Gorbachev has publicly stated his belief of the existence of Maitreya. Do you know if this is true? Wayne Peterson answers, I have one little story I could tell you about Gorbachev. A friend of mine who has worked with the World Bank went to the Heads of State Conference in Europe and gave a speech where he borrowed many of Maitreya's ideas for economic reform out of a book by Benjamin Krem that I had given him. He told me that he had read the book on his flight to Europe and realized that his keynote address to these world officials, especially presidents and prime ministers, it was a very high-level meeting, was going to be very boring with many having heard similar sentiments over and over so he thought he would throw in some of Maitreya's ideas into the speech. The country he was in had a reigning monarch who invited him to lunch the next day. When he showed up for lunch, there were 16 to 20 people there, including Mr. Gorbachev. The monarch of this country said to my friend, I suppose you're wondering why we invited you here today. Well, we are all curious about where you got those ideas for your speech, which you presented yesterday. He said that my friend Wayne gave me a book written by Benjamin Krem about Maitreya's mission. Immediately they nodded their heads. We thought so, was the apparent response. That's why we invited you here. We all know of Maitreya, and we're doing what we can for him. But we are not able to say anything publicly, because we are world leaders. We each have our own public to deal with. Only one person there stood up and said that they could use his name to legitimize these sightings, and that was Mikhail Gorbachev. He was the only man in the room who would say, use my name if you want. 
The reporter asks, Do you think President Clinton has had an experience with Maitreya? Wayne Peterson, I don't know if President Clinton has. I believe that former President Bush has. We used to have transmission meditation groups that Maitreya had asked us to do around Washington, D.C. People who were interested in Maitreya and the reappearance story would get together once a week in Georgetown, in the home of President Bush's main counselor at the White House. President Bush came over to this house for dinner one night, and the hostess was in the dining room as President Bush asked her, What do you think? I'm running against Clinton in this election. Am I going to win? She said, No, Mr. President, you are not. Maitreya has already said that you are going to lose to Clinton. Bush never challenged her, but merely said, Yeah, yeah. He didn't ask who Maitreya was. He was very quiet, and then said, I think I've got to go now. Benjamin Krim has said many times that he had heard from one of Maitreya's associates that Maitreya had appeared to Bush and that they had a discussion in the White House. So that incident with my meditation group seemed to confirm that Bush did in fact know of Maitreya. I do know people in the White House have been visited by Maitreya many times. And the people I'm talking I've seen on the front page of the Washington Post standing next to the President. In a December 19, 2008 London Telegraph article, Major Media Organization, Mick Brown praises Maitreya and Benjamin Krem, stating, quote, This week has come encouraging news for anyone with an interest in signs and wonders, or desperate for a chink of light in the prevailing gloom, which probably means most of us, a savior is at hand. I think even that, even that does not describe why the world has changed so much and why the world has turned so much toward a new world order and a new kind of civilization. Maitreya is one of the, the main uh, theosophy in Maitreya. Uh, the whole UN movement, the, the whole Lucius Trust movement, uh, world goodwill, uh, they're going out of the way to try to de discredit it and say, well, you know, Jesus, all he really was was a disciple of Maitreya. He's still a disciple of Maitreya. Maitreya is over him, and Jesus, they believe what happened is, is Jesus heralded in the age of Pisces. Now what we're going to be doing is now we need to herald in the age of Aquarius. This is where the new world order comes in, and this is what Maitreya is going to bring. So we're going to de-emphasize Jesus, and we're going to move over to Maitreya. Jesus is just a disciple of... Um, betray anyway according to them. In 1919, the Theosophist Alice Bailey was supposedly contacted by one of these ascended masters known as the Tibetan Dijwal Kul. From 1919 to 1949, Bailey would write 24 books and according to her, she would do automatic writing, a new age way of channeling and letting the force write for you. Bailey would create Lucifer Publishing, which would distribute the works of Helena Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society. She would later change the name to Lucius Trust because Lucifer Publishing was too controversial. Lucius Trust evolved into a large New Age organization, and it is still active today. Lucius Trust is also directly associated with the United Nations. According to the United Nations International Geneva Yearbook 2009, quote, the Lucius Trust is recognized by the United Nations as a non-governmental organization and is represented at regular briefing sessions at UN headquarters. The Lucius Trust is on the roster of the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Thus Theosophy and the New Age are now fused into the United Nations, which gives a medium for the New Age agenda to unfold. The aim of corrupt organizations like Lucius Trust and the UN is to create a one-world government, New World Order which is in accord with the supposed Age of Aquarius. Many high-level elitists have voiced their approval for such a system. Donald Keyes is a high-level New Age leader. Humanity, says Keyes, is, quote, on the verge of something entirely new, a further evolutionary step unlike any other, the emergence of the first global civilization. David Rockefeller, the owner of the Chase Manhattan Bank, 
called for a new world order openly in his book Memoirs, quote, For more than a century, ideological extremists at either end of the political spectrum have seized upon well-publicized incidents, such as my encounter with Castro, to attack the Rockefeller family for their inordinate influence they claim we wield over American political and economic institutions. Some even believe we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure, one world if you will. If that's the charge, I stand guilty and I am proud of it." Unquote. American foreign policy analyst and former Deputy Secretary of State Strobe Talbot advocated globalization and world government in Time Magazine, July 20, 1992 edition. He remarks, quote, Here is one optimist's reason for believing unity will prevail over disunity, integration over disintegration. In fact, I'll bet within the next hundred years, I'm giving the world time for setbacks and myself to be out of the betting game, just in case I lose this one. Nationhood as we know it will be obsolete. All states will recognize a single global authority. A phrase briefly fashionable in the mid-20th century, citizen of the world, will have assumed real meaning by the end of the 21st. All countries are basically social arrangements, accommodations to changing circumstances. No matter how permanent and even sacred they may seem at any one time, in fact, they are all artificial and temporary." Unquote. Mikhail Gorbachev, previously noted, stated, quote, The threat of environmental crisis will be the international disaster key that will unlock the new world order. Unquote. Gorbachev also remarked, quote, We are moving toward a new world order, the world of communism. We shall never turn off that road. Unquote. New Ager and student of Alice Bailey, Robert Mueller, former Secretary General of the United Nations, gave this frightening admission, quote, We must move as quickly as possible to a one-world government, a one-world religion, under a one-world leader, unquote. The global community realizes that the latest horrific development in world events is a major test, a challenge to our humanity, to our ability to rise above sectarianism, to embrace all and, in doing so, to keep our eyes on the prize that is humanity. The world is deeply troubled by the excess of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which has rapidly escalated into ethnic cleansing and genocide, and that's a complete lie because the Palestinians were ethnically cleansing the Israelis before Israel ever decided to defend themselves, not to say that strings aren't being pulled in Israel as well, but we've got to know where all this started. It says here, at the same time, humanity is required to choose, and that's what it talks about in the Albert Pike World War III letters, that mankind is going to have to choose between the Palestinian side or the Jewish side. It's exactly what it states about World War III. It says here, certainly not to choose sides, but to choose for justice, for life, and brotherhood, forgiveness, and the relinquishing of any longing for revenge. The current conflag conflagration must be seen in the context of sustained injustice and oppression of the Palestinian people, decade after decade since at least the early 20th century. Division and hatred have flourished, fed by propaganda and manipulated by those who stand to profit who stand to profit financially and in terms of power, nationalism, extremism, and fascism, both political and financial, have spawned notions of separations of us versus them. Such attitudes must be abandoned as having no place in a world in which we know ourselves to be one humanity on one planet. No, we, I, I'm going to stand with the Jewish people. It says in the Bible, those that curse Israel shall be cursed and those that bless Israel shall be blessed. It says here, political leaders are conditioned by outdated modes of thinking. Their territorial self-interest and political power games only add to the conflaga conflagration, which they may not be able to contain. All efforts must be made in to avoid drawing more countries into this most dangerous situation. They're not going to put in any effort towards that because they want more countries to be in this uh, dangerous situation. It says here, Benjamin Krem to remark in a number of his books in Share International Magazine and in answers to questions that, while a solution and reconciliation must be aimed at, it will make Maitreya himself to bring about this reconciliation. So Maitreya himself
himself is going to bring about reconciliation between the Palestinians and the Jews. All right, that's what Benjamin Krem himself has stated. All right, so what's happening right now is a leading up to the emergence of the Antichrist, hence what you saw on the national debt clock. Around the world, more and more people are speaking out, gathering to protest the biased approach to an ancient and highly complex situation. Human rights groups and aid organizations are calling for an immediate ceasefire, but in some form of the world's modern democracies known historically as champions of freedom and equality. There you go, liberty, equality, fraternity, all right? Public protests are being hampered and even banned. They're not being banned. They're all over the place. I mean, even in smaller cities to the north of me, I mean, we have a whole, we had a whole group of people waving around their pro-Palestinian flags. It says here, at a time when the voice of the people can and must play a crucial role, huge numbers of ordinary decent people want to see an immediate end to this feudal destruction. For the sake of humanity, our future, and our planet, stop now. Our collective future depends on our choice. Shame Sharing and justice are key in resolving this and all other conflicts. All right, mark my words, they're going to try to turn on them and they're going to try to divide Israel's land. Now, one thing we do know according to the scriptures is that eventually there's going to be a seven year peace accord that this Antichrist person is going to um, make with Israel. In other words, for the first time in who knows how long, Israel is finally going to be at peace with its neighbors. Now, right now, the plans for the Temple Mount have already been designed and a scaled down modeled version of it um, would appear like this. And over to the side, there should be, I believe it's here, there's a young boy. So you can get a size of just, you know, an idea of just how big this is in relationship. Right now, they already have all the temple furniture and everything set to be placed in the temple as soon as they are given permission to build. Now, accordingly, the only place that they could build is on the original temple mount. Problem is, that's also where the Mosque of Omar um, resides. The Mosque of Omar, or the Golden Dome of Iraq, is right here on the temple mount. Now, a number of things could happen to that. And I'm not saying people go out and cause this to happen, no. You know, let prophecy take its course. Um, since there is a war going on um, with Israel and its neighbors, um, a stray bomb could easily take out the Mosque of Omar. Or an earthquake could do it, or a number of things could happen to the building itself, which would allow the temple to be put up like that. Now, why is there so much interest, and this is a question that you would never be expected to be asked, but in the Illuminati, there was a lot of interest about the Temple Mount. And it's not just because that's where Christ had originally walked, it's because what they want to happen in the future. Now, you and I both know, according to the scriptures, um, it's going to be um, upon the Temple Mount that the third temple is going to be built and the Antichrist will sit there and proclaim himself to be God. Now, remember, the Illuminati wants this Antichrist figure to come. And if you remember, according to the last DVD we, we just produced, which is DVD 5, they're grooming the Antichrist. They're ready. All they have to do is wait for the right occasion and they're going to set this person loose on the earth. The Illuminati plans to destroy the Islamic Dome of the Rock. Why is the Illuminati so interested in the Temple Mount? They wanted to rebuild Solomon's Temple so their Masonic Christ can use it. Thus we read of such a plan being executed in the New World Order author Peter Lemassur writing in his book The Armageddon Script. It may be possible for the new David to ride into Jerusalem in all his resplendent majesty. Note the word ride on a donkey as predicted in Zechariah 9.9. 9. It would seem advisable for the new Messiah to repeat it, donkey and all. The processional route will, of course, lie directly across the Kidron Ravine as close as possible to the Temple Mount. He must be duly enthroned and anointed with oil in token of Psalm 45, 6-7, 
amid the rubble of the Dome of the Rock. Thus you see clearly the plan to reduce the Dome of the Rock to rubble so Solomon's temple can be rebuilt. Further, Lemassur ties this destruction of the Dome of the Rock to the appearance of the new David, the new age Christ, the Masonic Christ actually, whom the Bible calls Antichrist. Listen to the fervency with which the Illuminati views the creation of this third temple. Perhaps Masonic interest also increased from a more or less incidental notice of the temple to a final preoccupation with it as a symbol of spiritual man. To reiterate, Masons are preoccupied with King Solomon's temple. They're so preoccupied that they have gone to great lengths to justify building a new Solomon's temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Listen. Concerning the building of this temple, the Zohar teaches that Solomon's temple was not built according to the original plans. In a word, the Lord did not build the house. They labored in vain that built it. There is a time, however, to come when the Holy One shall remember his people Israel, and the Lord shall build the house. To reiterate, Zohar teaches that Solomon's temple was not built according to the original plans. In a word, the Lord did not build the house, and they labored in vain that built it. There is a time, however, to come when the Holy One shall remember his people Israel, and the Lord shall build the house. Now that we have been told that Solomon did not follow God's original plan in building the temple, we realize the importance Masons lay upon a Holy One that shall come to remember his people Israel, and shall commemorate that remembrance by finally building a house that he had originally intended Solomon to build. In other words, King Solomon messed up the royal plans for the temple. He did not follow God's original plan, so God allowed Solomon's magnificent temple to be destroyed. The coming Christ will rebuild it, but shall build it according to the original divine plan. Now can you appreciate the ruling handed down a few years ago by Orthodox Jewish leadership that only Messiah can build the temple? When the Masonic Christ shall come, then shall be fulfilled, waits, quote, the Lord shall build the house. Awaiting the man. Shockingly, the modern Masonic Bible quoted above verifies the fact that Solomon's temple will have to wait the appearance of a very special man. Listen. It is known to every reader of the Bible and student of Solomon's days that an amazingly detailed description of the temple and its associated structures has been carried down from the mists of antiquity by the scriptures. Lineal measurements, materials employed, and ornamental detail are so graphically presented that restoration of the temple at any time within a score of centuries past awaited only the coming of a man with the vision to recognize its historic value and the imagination to undertake the task. To reiterate the key point, restoration of the temple awaited only the coming of a man with the vision. That man, of course, will be the Masonic King of Despots, which Doc Marquis covered thoroughly in the Protocols of Zion DVD, and whose name is Destiny. He will be Antichrist, and when he arises, the third temple will be speedily built once the rubble of the Dome of the Rock is removed. They were interested in the Temple Mount, and they've been interested in the Temple Mount since the early 1800s because, and let me just say this, and this is going to shock you, but this is a fact. It was the Rothschild family, the head of the organization of the Illuminati right now, it was the Rothschilds who quite literally bought the area of the Temple Mount and thousands and thousands of surrounding acres. They bought it. And you can, again, you're going to have to do just a little, you don't have to do the homework, but just go, go online to verify these facts. Here is a photo of Rabbi Zvi Hirsch Kalischer. This rabbi had written a letter to Maya Amschel Rothschild. Now, it was Maya Amschel Rothschild who um, penned 
that famous expression, allow me to issue and control the money of a nation, and I care not who writes its laws. In other words, whoever owns the money makes the rules. Now, part of the letter that Rabbi Kalisher wrote to Baron Rothschild in 1836 says, and particularly at a time like this, when the province of the land of Israel is not under the rule of a powerful regime as it was in former times, he, the Egyptian ruler, Muhammad Ali, may well sell you the city of Jerusalem and its surroundings. From this too there will spring forth a horn of salvation, if we have the power and authority to seek the place of the altar and to offer acceptable burnt offerings to the God of eternity, and from this may Judah be delivered in an eternal deliverance. This was just part of the letter that um, was sent to Baron Rothschild. And yes, and if you look in um, the um, Harper magazine of that time, and Harper's magazine was one of the earliest magazines we did have, but this was recorded, the same event of the Rothschilds buying out the Temple Mount. So these are my final thoughts from everything we've gathered here today and everything we put together. This is what I see coming next. And, and I, I'm not going to say it's a prediction, but this is something I feel deep, deep down. Um, I see this Palestinian and Israeli conflict getting out of hand, World War III, okay? Um, like Doc Markey had said, it's going to take a, a missile to hit the Dome of the Rock or an earthquake or, you know, someone detonating something there and reducing that to rubble. Okay, and once that happens, I believe that's going to be the time when Maitreya will stand up and will make his way into Israel and will declare, you know, uh, 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 himself as this person that's going to have all the answers. But I do believe that he will have a hand in the rebuilding of the Third Temple, like Doc Marquis has stated. And I absolutely believe that this conflict will produce Antichrist. We've talked about in past videos how Doc Marquis had said the Third World War will produce antichrist that's what's happening right now all right and that just means we are going home even sooner than we think i appreciate each and every one of you that have watched this whole entire video i know it was long it means so much to me that you guys spent the time to learn the information that's in this all right i i pray discernment and protection over you all spiritually and mentally and emotionally and physically in jesus mighty name and i pray for each and every one of your your households and your children and i ask the lord to protect them and watch over them and keep them safe may god bless you all may god keep you and please don't forget to go out and change the world in which you live
Acabou de marchar aqui de qual foi, Olha aqui. Acabou de marchar. 